Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Elden Ring and we're going to be doing the top 11 best quality colossal weapons. So this is going to be another one in our series of quality weapon videos where we just go through the ones that require strength and dexterity. No faith, no arcane, and no our intelligence. Uh, I said our intelligence. No intelligence. What a weird word to screw up. Uh, really undercuts the name of it. But anyway, uh, this is going to be for those who just want to bonk. They don't want to cast incantations. They don't want to do spells. They don't want to put a bunch of points into arcane or faith or whatever. They just want to hit people with giant weapons. And since they're colossal weapons it makes sense that we're going to do these ones so we're just going to start it off with number 11 the great club so for this weapon attributes required to use it it's just 35 strength so just strength for this one not even dexterity and it has a b rating for scaling and strength our attack power on this one is 773 when using it two-handed uh, it cannot be upgraded using ashes of war but it does have the golden land special attack and the description on that is thrust the armament into the ground then gather strength to unleash a blast of sacred energy that coalesces into golden darts follow up with a strong attack to switch the armament in a sweeping strike so if we do that we smash her into the ground and hold it we get all those darts coming out and it's uh it can be pretty useful but mostly people just like this weapon because you got a big old bashing club that does a ton of damage and only requires strength to use so as far as how to get this one it's going to be up here in the altus plateau region you make your way to the old altus tunnel and uh, i'll just zip through and show you the path you're going to be fighting the stone digger troll at the end of this tunnel And it'll be right in this room here. So once you've made your way down, it's actually pretty quick. You don't have to do all the extra exploring. Of course, there's a lot of other enemies in here, but you come in here and you kill the Stone Digger Troll and he will drop this great club. So that is how you get a hold of this weapon. So that's number 11. Let's move on to number 10. So at number 10, we have the Duelist's Great Axe, which is one of my favorite looking colossal weapons in the game. It's just a big old giant axe. Gotta really love the way it looks. And uh, fun fact, this one and the next one are the two best colossal weapons, at least in my opinion, for uh, dual wielding. So if you get, get your hands on two of them and use them in power stancing, this one and the next one on this list are the best colossal weapons for it. As far as uh, attributes required to use this one, 30 for strength and 10 for dexterity, and it's going to have a D rating in strength scaling, but a C rating in dexterity. So it actually scales better with dexterity than it does with strength, even though the requirement is much lower. As far as our attack power on this one goes, it's going to be 833 when you're using it two-handed. This one comes with the Endure special ability or weapon art which is uh, where you pound it into the ground and it just increases your poise which is nice but more importantly you can upgrade it using ashes of war so you can put a big old red lightning buff on it and get a crazy weapon out of it pretty dang fun uh, colossal weapon and like I said one of the best depending on how you use it uh, but it takes the number 10 overall spot for quality colossal weapons as far as how and where to get this one uh, it's a random loot drop but it can be farmed decently easy pretty early in the game so you make your way up to the Altus Plateau region and into the royal capital once you've gotten to the west capital range ramparts, uh, you're going to want to go up towards the Colosseum there. And it's important to do this early on in the game because once the capital has been changed by story progression, you will no longer be able to do this farming uh, method. So keep in mind if you want to get this one or if you even want to get two of them, then it's best to do it early in the game. Well, basically, you're just going to be looking for him. So you see he's a duelist standing there. You're going to want to just kill him and then keep doing it over and over again until you get this weapon. Now, the thing is, with all random grinding weapons, the best way to go about this is going to be to make sure you have got a very high arcane level. And then, uh, oh boy, he got me. How which? Uh, but the higher your arcane is, the more likely you are to actually get a drop. So... Uh, just keep killing this guy until you get it, and I think there's actually one more up here too. Okay, no, this one is a duelist as well, but he doesn't drop the axe because he's wielding uh, the warhammers, which are cool, but not the axe. So again, that's right here on the map, or by the Colosseum, closest site of grace being the West Capitol Ramparts, or I guess maybe the uh, Erd Tree Sanctuary, depending on which way you go, but there's more enemies between you and there here. If you take the West Capitol Ramparts, you can just run straight up. So just keep killing him until he drops the duelist's great axe, and that is how you get this one. So that's number 10, let's move on to number 9. All right, and so at number 9, we have the Rock and great axe so it's going to be real similar to the duelist great axe just slightly different uh, appearance is going to be almost exactly the same and like i said with the previous one in this one these two are actually at least in my opinion the best colossal weapons for dual wielding you know if you want to dual wield then either the great axe the duelist great axe or the rotten great axe are like i said at least in my opinion the best ones to go with as far as stats on this one it's going to be pretty similar to the last one strength of 30 10 for dexterity again d rating for strength and a c rating for dex uh, this one does have a passive effect which is that it causes 65 points of scarlet rot build 
build up, which is actually why I placed this one ahead of the Duelist Great Axe, because the attack power is a little bit lower. This one has a 794, so it's not ridiculously lower, but I think the Scarlet Rot build up more than makes up for it, at least in most cases. Uh, as far as our weapon art with this one, it's going to be the Endure one again, so you pound it into the ground and it gives you a higher uh, poise. And just like the Duelist Great Axe, you can upgrade this one using Ashes of War, so that is very nice. Uh, this one on the bright side is not a random drop, so you don't have to grind it. You just come up here to the Ordina Liturgical Town, and to get here you have to have had the Secret Medallion at the Grand Lift of Rold, which will bring you up to the Hidden Path to Halig Tree. But once you get up to the Ordina Liturgical Town, you're just going to be going north of here to find the Rotten Duelist. And so you can see him standing right there. Now again, this is an optional late game area, so he is going to be a tougher fight than a standard Duelist. And of course, he will keep respawning here. But yeah, you're just going to want to follow up. Now, basically, the only thing to keep in mind here is to make sure that he does not fall off the cliff. Because if he does, you're much more likely to, uh, you know, not be able to get the weapon. He really is stuck in charge mode, isn't he? I want to lure him up here so he doesn't... Okay, there we go. He staggered me out of it. And now, obviously, we uh, do have to deal with the fact that he's dealing Scarlet Rot damage. Or build up, I should say. There we go. But yeah, so you just kill him, and he will drop it the first time you kill him. Okay, good. So he does not drop it a second time. But that is how you get it. So again, we're right here in the uh, sacred or consecrated snowfields, and that is how you get number nine, the Rotten Great Axe. All right, and so at number eight, we have the Golem's Halberd, which you can see we're using here. Despite being called a hal uh, halberd, it is, in fact, a part of the Colossal Weapons uh, category. So as far as attributes required to use this one, 36 strength, 30, uh, 14 dexterity. This one is going to have a C rating for strength, scaling and a D rating for dexterity scaling. As far as our attack on the uh, attack power in the Golem's Halberd goes, it is 853, so decently higher than both the Duelist Great Axe and the Rotten Great Axe. Uh, this one has the Charge Fourth weapon art, which is pretty fun, and it can be upgraded using Ashes of War. So that uh, special attack is going to look like this. You charge fourth and you do a big old thrust. I find it pretty useful for quickly closing the gap between you and enemies and also shield breaking and everything. It's a pretty useful special attack, but again, you're probably just going to replace it with whatever your favorite Ash of War is. So this one is a possible drop from any golem type enemy that wields this weapon. And so I'm up here at the Limgrave uh, Tower Bridge here, which is the earliest game one to do. So if you're going to try grinding this weapon out, it makes sense to do it here because the enemies here are going to be easier to defeat just because they're early game enemies. So there are three golems on this bridge, I think two of which wield this halberd. So that, uh, the first one right here does. And so you just kill them and uh, keep respawning until you get it. So again, like always, the higher your arcane is, the better your chance chances are of getting this weapon. All right, and so our next up weapon at number seven is the Axe of Godfrey, one that I wanted to be a lot better than it actually is just because of how much I like the appearance of it, but it's it's a middle-of-the-road colossal weapon. So as far as uh, attributes required to use this one, 42 strength, 14 dexterity, and this one is going to scale for C with strength and D for dexterity, uh, so not terrible. As far as our attack power on this one goes, it's going to be 926, so over 900, which is why it got to the spot it did. It has the Regal Roar weapon art and uh, cannot be upgraded using Ash of war. So Regal Roar is let loose a mighty war cry, raising attack power while sending out a shockwave that cannot be guarded against by stomping the ground while active. Strong attack becomes a lunging slash. So you do the uh, charged up attack, big old shockwave, and then you can uh, do this big old lunging slash with your strong attack with it. So uh, pretty dang good, I would say, in certain circumstances, but in others, not so good. And since you can't upgrade it using Ashes of War, it's uh, not one of my favorite weapons in the game. But obviously, the base damage is still rather good with it, so that's why it gets the rating that it has. So the thing about getting this one is you have to trade the Remembrance of Horalu, who is a legend boss, and you have to trade that Remembrance at the Round Table Hold to Enya, and that's how you get this weapon. So to get that, you have to have progressed decently far through the game, because you're going to have to have gone up through here, the mountaintops of the Giants, done something here at the Forge of the Giants, gone to the Fire Missoula and come back to the capital and the capital will be different and so you'll have to fight your way back up again through the air tree sanctuary into the queen's bedchamber and once you get up through here you will have a boss fight with uh godfrey the first elden lord and once you get his health down below 40 he will transform into horalu warrior which is just the earlier form of him in the lore and you fight him and once you've defeated him you'll have the remembrance that you trade for this axe so it's as close to the end of 
the game as you can get without actually being at the end of the game. So it does take a very long time to get this weapon, and uh, honestly, maybe not worth it, considering there are better ones on this list than this one that can be grabbed much earlier in the game. But that is number seven, the Axe of Godfrey. Let's move on to number six. So the one that comes in at number six is the Watchdog Staff, this big old staff-looking weapon. As far as our attributes required to use this one, 34 for strength, 10 for dexterity. Gonna have a D rating for dexterity scaling and C for strength. Attack power on this one is gonna be 933, so a little bit higher than the Axe of Godfrey. This one cannot be upgraded using Ashes of War, but it has the Sorcery of the Crozier uh, weapon art. And the description on that weapon art is channel magic into the glintstone to activate an ancient sorcery, producing floating magic projectiles that chase enemies automatically. And so this is one that does not require any intelligence to use, but does uh, in a form use glintstone sorcery. So it just shoots out a bunch of projectiles. So it's actually pretty useful in certain circumstances, but also just a big old bashing weapon for, uh, for your average strength user. So, not bad there. As far as how to get this one, it's going to be over here in Lyranny of the Lakes uh, at the Roads and Catacombs, and I'll just kind of zip through to the exact location for where you pick this up. And so once you've gone through that illusory wall, you come back here, and there will be two corpses on the ground, and this one in the back will have the Watchdog Staff on it. So, pretty simple process uh, once you've gotten into the Roads and Catacombs, and a pretty easy weapon to get, honestly, early in the game, considering how good it actually is in combat. So uh, that is number six, the Watchdog Staff. Let's move on to number five. All right, and so the one that we have that comes in at number five is the Dragon Great Claw. So you can see just a big old dragon claw looking weapon, pretty cool looking. As far as our attributes are to use this one, 30 for strength, 14 for dexterity, and it's going to have a D rating for dexterity scaling and C for strength. Our attack power on the Dragon Great Claw, Great Claw is going to be 967, so pretty dang high. This one, unfortunately, cannot be upgraded using Ashes of War and has the Endure Special Ability. So that uh, special ability, again, is just going to be this, where, so now our poise is higher. So unfortunately, you can't upgrade it using Ashes of War, but it does have one of the highest just natural physical damages in the game at uh, 967. So pretty dang good. Honestly, a solid weapon for anyone who just loves to go clubbing. But uh, that is, uh, in a nutshell, what we can say about the Dragon Great Claw. So as far as getting this one, it is going to be a drop for killing the Draconic Tree Sentinel, which can be fought right here at the capital outskirts. So you can see we're up here in the Altus Plateau region. The capital ramparts, the closest side of grace, we're up here. This is how you get into the capital. And uh, right here, you'll find the Draconic Tree Sentinel and fight him, and he will drop this weapon. So pretty straightforward and simple process, and you will get to it through natural story progression because you have to kill this boss to get into the capital. So that is how and where you get the Dragon Great Claw. All right, and so at number four, we've got a lot of people's favorite weapon, the Giant Crusher. So just a huge, massive stone hammer that is ridiculous in its proportion, but also does a lot of damage, so I guess that's why a lot of people like it. As far as attributes required to use this one, nothing but strength, just 60 strength. So real high requirement, but only one skill. And it has a B rating for attribute scaling and strength. This one for attack power has a uh, rating of 865, so slightly lower than the last couple, but this one can be upgraded using Ashes of War, and so based on various stuff that I've done with it and Ashes of War I've tested out, you can make it a lot better of a weapon than the Dragon Great Claw, Watchdog Staff, or the Axe of Godfrey. So that's why I rated it here. That and the fact that it's just a giant one-ton block of granite on a stick makes it uh, the obvious weapon choice for strength type people. So we're going to be over here at the, uh, we're once again up in the Altus Plateau for getting this one, and the outer wall phantom tree is the closest side of grace and you're gonna be heading straight south to about here to an unmarked military camp so let's just uh pop on over there That guy must have the best armor in the world considering he uh, survived that blow. But it should be right up in here in this caravan, if I'm not mistaken. So you should be able to open up this chest and grab it. Of course, I can't because I've already gotten it. Either that or it's somewhere else in here, but I'm pretty sure it's right in there because I remember it being in a chest in this camp and that's the only chest I can see. That is uh, how you get the giant crusher weapon. And again, you can get one of these per playthrough or you can have, one dro uh, have someone drop you one in multiplayer. So that's number four, the giant crusher. Let's move on to number three. All right, and so at number three, we've got my personal favorite colossal weapon, the Prelate's Inferno Croizier. I love this weapon. It's a fantastic weapon. Comes with a great weapon art on it. Uh, not only looks cool, but does a ton of damage. As far as the attributes required to use this one, 45 for strength and 8 for dexterity. It's going to have an E rating for dexterity scaling, but B for strength, so this one scales very well with strength. Uh, as far as our attack power on this one, it's going to be 869, so slightly higher than the Giant Crusher, and this one can be upgraded using Ashes of War. Plus, it starts with the Prelate's Charge special attack, which is just ridiculously good. It does this big old flaming strike that charges forward, and if you run it into a larger enemy type, you'll just keep doing continuous damage to them. And of course, it leaves behind a uh, flame that will 
hurt other people. And then it ends with a big old charge bash. So it's just a really good special attack that I love a lot. So as far as how to get this one, I used to think it was a random drop, but now I know that it's not because I tested enough times and it is definitely not a random drop. You go to Fort Laid up here in the uh, Mount Galmir subregion near the Seethwater Site of Grace, Seethwater Terminus, that's the closest one, and there will be an Inferno Prelate in here that the first time you kill him in your playthrough, he will drop this weapon. You kill him, and the first time you kill him in the game, he will drop this weapon. So that's how you get the Prelate's Inferno Chrysler. Uh, like I said, my personal favorite uh, colossal weapon in the game. So that's number three. Let's move on to number two. Alrighty, and so at number two, we have the Rotten Staff. So it's uh, it looks a lot like the Air Tree Avatar Staff. Not quite exactly the same, but pretty close, except for this one is clearly rotten. And so as far as the attributes required to use this one, it's going to be 8 Dexterity and 34 Strength. Uh, this one has a B rating for Strength Scaling and a D rating for Dexterity Scaling. It does have a passive effect, and that is that it causes 75 Five points of Scarlet Rot buildup, so that's pretty sweet. Uh, as far as our attack power in this one goes, it's 904, so a decent step above the Giant Crusher and the Prelates Inferno Crozier. This one does not have the ability to be upgraded using Ashes of War, but it does have the Air Tree Slam special attack, which can be pretty useful. It's just a big old powerful butt slam where you do a bunch of faith damage all in the area. Can be pretty useful, but most of what this one's going to be good for is that excellent Scarlet Rot buildup and the really good physical damage that it can do. So, as far as how and where to get this one, you have to make your way to the uh, Elfail Brace of the Halig Tree little optional subregion, and uh, once you've gotten up here, the Prayer Room Site of Grace is the one you're going to want to start from. So you're going to want to run out this door, and we're going to be looking for the second concrete buttress, which is this one right here. We're going to want to go down to this ledge on this tower here, and then you can hop right over onto this bridge. And once you do that, you're going to make your way to the south and there will be an Erd Tree or an Erd Tree avatar patrolling uh, this walkway. Or I should say not necessarily south, but basically this whole section of walkway here. And all you have to do is kill the Erd Tree avatar and the avatar will drop this weapon. So that's how you get it. Uh, can be a comp or can be a difficult boss fight just because this is a light game region and so all the bosses here are pretty well buffed, but uh, not that hard of a process. So you kill the Erd Tree avatar here and that's how you get this weapon. Again, here we are on the map right here on this outer walkway in uh, the Halig Tree subregion. So that's number two. Let's move on to the number one best quality colossal weapon in the game. All right, and so for the number one best quality colossal weapon in the game, we have Giza's Wheel, which should come as no surprise to anyone that's used it. Pretty interesting looking weapon, just a big old spiked wheel on a stick, essentially. As far as our attributes required to use this one, 28 strength, 18 dexterity, uh, C rating for both dexterity and strength, so scales relatively well with both. Uh, this one does have a passive effect, and that is that it causes a blood loss buildup of 70, which is great. Uh, our attack power on this one is 908, so it's actually higher than uh, all of them except for the Dragon Great Claw, Watchdog Staff, and the Axe of Godfrey. And it has the Spinning Wheel special attack, which in the right circumstances can be very powerful, especially if you're going for some sort of a bleed build. So even though this one can't be upgraded using Ashes of War, that special attack can be pretty useful. So as far as how and where to get this one, you have to make your way up to the Volcano Manor, and there's a number of ways to do that. But once you've gotten up here from the Volcano Manor site of Grace, you just head up these steps in the main chamber here in the manor. And uh, once you've walked into this room here, you will uh, be invaded by the Inquisitor Giza. And all you have to do is kill Inquisitor Giza, and you will get this weapon because it'll be dropped. So that is how you get this weapon. And so just to show you that special attack, since I couldn't do it in Volcano Manor, you charge up this big spinning attack and you can just hold it until you run out of FP. So it can be pretty useful for taking out certain enemies and obviously any enemy where they're a large one who doesn't move particularly fast that you can just grind a bunch of damage into, it's going to be really, really effective against them. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you liked this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.